Okay, so this is Trello, and this is what I use to manage my entire contract to close process. Uh, so you just go to Trello.com. You can sign up for a free account. You do not need to pay for this. Uh, everything that you need to do, you can do it on the free account. Uh, and so this agent sample board, I'm going to be putting a link to this one in the resources section. So then you can uh, download this and make a copy into your own account and then customize it. So I have two boards in here. One is my buyer contract to close and then the other one is my seller pre-listing to close. So let's take a look at both of them. So the buyer contract to close, this is everything that I need to do uh, to get this buyer to closing. So the first column has the important information and this is where my template is for uh, each transaction. So for each of these, you just create a, a new uh, card and this will show you uh, everything that you need to do for that transaction. So this template just outlines uh, you know, the f address, the MLS number, it's got a link to my Google Drive where I keep all of the contracts and the paperwork and all of that. And then you can also put in some important notes about the property. Uh, you know, this might be notes about you know what what parking spot there is, what lockbox code uh, it is, different things like that that you just need to remember for the property. And then down here is everything about the contract. So we're looking at the sales contract and putting in, okay, this is the purchase price that was agreed to, if there's any seller subsidy, some earnest money deposit, and really all of the different deadlines that are happening here. And then the inspection days, if you did already schedule it, what day is it gonna be done? Uh, so you can start to manage all of those dates and make it not confusing. Then you've got your client information and their phone numbers, just basically everybody who's involved in the transaction, uh, what their names are and what uh, you know company they work for and their contact information. Because on one contract, it's it's not that big of a deal. And uh, even you know one to three, maybe you can probably manage it and just remember everything. But as you get more and more deals done, each one is going to have you know a different buyer, a different seller, a different lender, a different title company, and it's going to start to get confusing who's who on who's on which transaction. So you want to be able to quickly reference this so that you can save time without having to like go back to your emails or you know going back to the contract. Uh, so we've got some more information about, you know, if there are repairs, have they gotten done yet? And, you know, just keeping track of all of this, uh, who the utility companies are so we can give that information to the buyer, um, all of that. And so once that's filled out, basically there's different stages to the contract to close process. So the first stage is just opening a new ratified contract. So we've got a brand new one in, you know, we're creating this new card and we're just going through this process of, you know, setting up the, uh, the, the Trello card to make sure that we've gotten everything going for this new contract. Then we're going to be managing the home inspection. If there is a home inspection, uh, you know, a radon inspection, uh, maybe you're doing a well or a septic inspection as well. So this, this checklist is very complete, uh, but it's not going to be applicable to every transaction. So, you know, I do have this like well and septic on here, but maybe, you know, one or two transactions out of every year actually have that. So if it doesn't have it, then I'll just go ahead and delete that checklist because I'm not going to need it for that specific transaction. But it's always the same on the template uh, so I can copy it if I need it. And so we just go through this whole process. Now, if this seems overwhelming to you guys, uh, this is, you know, a checklist that I have developed over years of real estate. And so if you look at it and you copy it and you don't think you need everything in there, just delete it. Uh, it's totally fine. You want to customize this for yourself that makes it work for you so that you're going to use it every day. I would go and talk with your broker or your mentor and just go through this process with them. Say, hey, do we do that? Do I need to have this in there? Uh, am I missing something? You know, you want to customize it to your local area. And there's things to do with the title company, you know, making sure that earnest money deposit was uh arrived on time, uh, if there is an HOA or a condo, uh, making sure that there's some activities really related to that, uh, termite inspections, uh, title insurance, all these different contingencies. So this is basically just a giant checklist of everything that you might need to do on a transaction. 
And then we customize this template for each specific transaction, depending on what's actually in the contract. Um, so once we kind of, you know, are managing this, we're getting through to closing, then the third stage is the seven days before closing. And so, you know, a week before closing, we're doing a lot more stuff. We're making sure that everything is, you know, on track, that the buyer knows how much money to bring to closing, that we're scheduling the warranties or, or the walkthrough. Uh, you know, the buyer knows what utilities are going on and then you have to transfer their utilities. So there's all of this information that that happens really about a week before closing. So we've got all of that stuff going on here. And then on closing day, making sure that, you know, like you as an agent, you, you're bringing your sold sign, you're getting photos, uh, you're asking for, you know, a testimonial or a review from that client. We always give a closing gift to the buyer, all of that stuff. And it's just a checklist just to remind you, hey, remember to do these things. Uh, and then finally, a post-closing process as well. So just letting the buyer know that, hey, we're still your agent. We're still around. We're still going to be contacting you. Uh, you know, they can always come back to us for more questions or anything like that post-closing. And that's by having a post-closing process, you're really, you know, setting yourself up for those future referrals from that client because they know that you're not just, oh, I got paid, see you later kind of agent, but you're there for the long haul. You're going to be there with them you know, in the months later if they have a question. And so this is just a really organized way to make sure that, you know, no balls are dropped, that you have are on top of all of the deadlines and you're just giving your clients a really great client experience. And that experience is the same for every transaction. So that's the template. And so basically what you do here is you would click on this and then you can just copy. So you would copy this, let's say this is now, you know, John, so he can go lives at, or he just got a property 999 Apple Street under contract. So let's say John, John Jones. Um, and so you just title it to your, uh, the property address and the buyer, however you wanna do it. Uh, this is the board that we're on, is the buyer contract to close board. And then you would be in stage zero, buyer new contract. And so we just create that card and you can see that it just popped up here. And now it's just that card and now you can customize that card for that specific transaction. So, you know, maybe maybe um, this transaction, you know, doesn't uh, doesn't have a well contingency. So you can, you know, delete that off of this specific transaction, uh, this specific card, but it's still on the template. So you can just go ahead and customize this and then you'll have all this information to reference back to. Um, and then you can see that like as the as your transaction progresses, you're just going to be moving this card down the line. You know, when they're uh, at the home inspection stage, then it goes in here after home inspection. Then you're just working on the financing and appraisal and all that kind of stuff. Then you're at the seven days before closing and you're doing stuff the seven days before closing. Then you're getting to the closing day and post closing. And then these are all of our archived transactions. And so then you can quickly see visually what you have in the pipeline, right? So, you know, maybe you've got some that just went under contract. You've got some that are about to close. Uh, you know, maybe you have a closing today. Uh, so you can really easily see where all of your contracts are and what still needs to be done with each transaction. So I really love Trello. It's a really easy way to just keep track of a lot of deals at once uh, without dropping any balls. So let's take a look now back at uh, the seller um, contract to close uh, process. So the seller contract to close is pretty much the same. It actually starts earlier. Uh, so I have this all the way from pre-listing to close. So as soon as the seller decides that they want to work with me and they've signed all the paperwork, then uh, they get a card here. So again, what we would do is, you know, it's the same, same process. You know, you've got all this information and then you've got all the checklists on the seller side uh, on here. So we would just, you know, make a copy. And let's say this is 111 Main Street and this is Jane Smith. So we would just do that. The list would be a new listing agreement and coming soon, and we would create that card. Um, 
And, and so then you can have this card. One thing that I like to do is I do like to uh, put a picture of uh, all my transactions on the card. So you can kind of see that with my uh, buyer contract to close. I always like to put a picture here because then I can very quickly like see which transaction it is without necessarily reading it. Uh, so I like to put the picture there. I think it just adds a little something to, <laughs> to these transactions. Uh, but here, the seller pre-listing to close, you can see then uh, this first stage is really the new listing agreement, just opening the file, uh, figuring out what we're doing when we're marketing the property as a coming soon before it's actually active. Then it goes into the active listing where, you know, we've put it onto the MLS and everybody knows about it. This is, you know, where an open house would happen, different things like that. Then stage two is really that start of the contract to close process where we've got a new ratified contract on the seller side. And so now we're just doing you know, the same thing as the buyer contract to close except on the seller side. So you know, we've got a you know, new ratified contract, we're getting through the home inspection, we're making sure that the buyer's financing and, and all of that stuff is taken care of, we're making sure that the seller you know, is making those repairs, all that kind of stuff. Then we've got our activities that we need to do on the seller side seven days before closing, any closing day activities, and then post-closing. Uh, so the process is very much the same whether you're on the seller side or the buyer side. Uh, this whole kind of workflow that you can kind of see your entire pipeline uh, in a very visual way uh, is, is great for just managing all of the deadlines, especially if you have a mix of buyers and sellers in different stages. Uh, and again, you know, this software is Trello. It's absolutely free. Everything that I showed you today is free. Uh, so you do not need to pay uh, for any upgrades into Trello.